see you in church today. A couple of quick things before we start. Uh, God willing, the builders will be around next week, and it is likely next Sunday the car park will not be available. Okay, so please be aware that probably next Sunday our little car park will not be available. The builders will have a little site office on it uh, uh, and other building uh, equipment ready to do some work. Uh, Owen and Caitlin uh, begin with us this week and uh, they're in Sunday Club and we hope that Owen will be able to come in and Caitlin very briefly towards the end of the service this morning so that you can just uh, get to see them. And then if you would continue to remember us in prayer as we look for a venue where we can meet when we're out of the building. So we are looking, we've been disappointed with a few places uh, and we need your prayers to find the right venue for when the builders need us out of the building. Okay. Jesus came to the synagogue in Nazareth and he stood up and read from the prophet Isaiah these words which reveal the motives behind his mission. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. We've had a year that's been very tough. We could do with a year of God's favour, couldn't we? Let's worship God. Let's come to him in prayer. And Father, we pray for the presence of your Holy Spirit among us. We pray, Father, that you will help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, and for your love for us that is revealed in his life, his ministry, his dying on the cross and his rising from the dead. So, Father, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Help us worship you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship God and sing our opening song, or Carolyn will sing. Uh, the rest of us will mumble. Uh, and as I said, we could do with some more uh, help with the singing in the weeks ahead. Let's stand together and worship God. Your might, your endless love 
then surely we would never cease to praise. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hi everyone. Last August, I took on the role of pulpit secretary following on from Jonathan Davis, and we thank Jonathan for the years that he fulfilled this role. Well, what is the role of the pulpit secretary? Basically, it's arranging for preachers to be with us on Sundays when Martin is away on holiday or Martin is preaching at other churches. Someone gave a definition of preaching. Preaching is God speaking in the power of his spirit about his son from his word through a person. What motivates this preaching is God speaking through a person. It's opening up to us the scriptures. 
We think of those invited to preach at our services. Think of their preparation as they study the Bible. The Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, writes, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. We need to pray for Martin, that as he prays and studies God's word, he may be inspired to unpack the scriptures, making them relevant for us today. We thank Martin for his faithfulness to scripture, for the words of truth that he reveals from the Bible. We need to bring before God all who will come to Gilgal to preach, that in the preparation of the message, in their prayers, in their reading of the scriptures, their sermon may be rooted in God's word, that God speaks through them to our lives. That it's not their wants and their wishes, not their desires, not about how great they are, but how great God is. We would pray with them that Jesus would shine through the message. Some that will be with us this year, COVID restrictions permitting, are the Reverend Peter Idris Taylor, the moderator of the South Wales Baptist Association. Reverend Haley Young, Regional Minister of the South Wales Baptist Association. Reverend Craig Gardner, the tutor of South Wales Baptist College. Ruth Morgan from Compassion UK. Mark Gibson from Serving in Mission UK. And for our church anniversary on the 4th of July, the Reverend Mark Fairweather Tall, the Regional Minister, Team Leader of the South Wales Baptist Association. Let's pray. Lord, we pray for those who will come to proclaim your word. Protect them, guard their minds and minister to their heart. Guide and empower all preachers of your word by your spirit. We thank you for all who have told us of your love and of your presence amongst us. Open our hearts and our minds to hear you. Yes, open our lives to you, O Lord, that we may know your presence and power, and in knowing you, we may love and serve you and live in righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading this morning is going to be brought to us by Mark. Thank you, Mark. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know, that, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen. Ruth Rice was a married mother with three children, working full-time as a teacher, and on the leadership of her local Baptist church, leading a full and active life and faith. When she started losing her voice, laryngitis, 
and then just generally lacking energy and the ability to do all the things she wanted to do getting sick more often than she ever had been before and so she went to the doctors for a checkup the doctor told her that she was suffering burnout he explained it uh, a little bit like your bank where you have money in the bank uh, but in her case it was not money but emotional resources and she was overdrawn and that she needed to take time off work to begin to rebuild her emotional resources so uh, as Ruth took time off work and researched emotional well-being she realized how many other people around her were facing the same emotional mental burnout stress anxiety and pressures she gradually got better uh, and is now a full-time Baptist minister and with her church in Nottingham they opened what was the first well-being cafe in 2015 it was meant to be a safe space where people who were burned out suffering from a broken heart or a troubled mind could come and find spiritual presence and peace and God has blessed it uh, it was a, a place where they said it's okay to not be okay and sometimes we need somebody to say that to us don't we that uh, at times in our lives we all go through these these times of stress and anxiety uh, and maybe burnout where we've used up all our resources and we just can't find a way to balance life and cope anymore well these well-being cafes God has blessed them and the Holy Spirit has multiplied them and there are now more than 50 of these well-being cafes around the United Kingdom many of them uh, in churches or in the community started by Christian churches and Ruth has been helping others to to get these things going and so she's written a book it's called slow down show up and pray uh, and it is well worth reading it's so well worth reading that the the South Wales Baptist Association uh, has made it a book that they're encouraging churches to read and to study together not only that but we have purchased 12 copies so that everyone on our leadership team our diaconate can have a copy we're going to be reading it and reflecting on it as part of our church leadership team to see if God would say anything to us as a church here at Gilgal through this wave of what the Holy Spirit seems to be speaking to churches around the country at the moment uh, and that happens doesn't it that every now and again there's that wave of the Holy Spirit whether it's street pastors or food banks or something else uh, and this is one of these waves of the Spirit that God is releasing upon our nation right now in searching for ways to help people with emotional well-being uh, they talk about three principles of being present being prayerful and being in partnership with others uh, and uh, maybe sometime I'll have the opportunity to open those up a little bit more about the importance of community being present of being prayerful of there is a God who can make a difference in our lives emotionally and mentally as well as physically and spiritually and about being in partnership with with other people and other agencies and then they talk about five practices that can help us with our emotional well-being connecting with other people keep learning 
maybe rediscovering a, 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 a good habit or something that you used to do, like play a musical instrument or uh, be involved with a, a hobby or a charity. Getting active. Doing something is always better than doing nothing. Take notice, not only of the world around you, but of other people and their needs. And give. If you want to get out of life, sometimes you need to be willing to put in first. And uh, uh, the coronavirus has triggered a huge mental health problem in our nation. Society is facing an emotional and mental health crisis. And the good news is, as Christians, we have spiritual medicine that can help heal troubled minds and broken hearts. We've got good news. And that good news is for every part of life. So I want us to look into this issue of spiritual well-being over the next few weeks. Uh, I hope that if you know your Bible, you'll be able to recognize how many famous Bible people have suffered overwhelming problems that have led to burnout or breakdown in some way. We won't go into them all today, but over the next few weeks, we'll look at some of them, like Elijah, like Peter, like Jeremiah, like Jonah, like Jesus in Gethsemane, and how God has come along into the brokenness and brought healing and help and strength. And I think that this is a message that our society and our nation needs to hear right now. Because the coronavirus has so affected us that we've become disconnected, we've become more anxious, we've become more stressed. And we need to recover God's peace. Remember how Jesus described his mission in this term of freeing the captives, of helping people in their time of need. And as we look at the ministry of Jesus, we see a ministry of bringing God's peace and well-being as well as salvation. We have eternal life in the future and abundant life here and now. Well-being through faith in Jesus Christ. I want us this morning then to look at one verse of scripture, or two verses actually, and just begin to open up this area of spiritual, emotional, mental well-being. It's Ephesians 4 verses 6 and 7. And there the Bible says this, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I particularly like that last bit. That God wants to guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but there have been times in life where my mind has been deeply, overwhelmingly troubled. But God can guard our minds. I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life where my heart has been broken, badly hurt by people or problems. And God wants to guard our hearts and bring healing to our hearts. Does this sound good news to you? Uh, I hope that you were looking at this scripture and hearing my words and thinking, I'm so grateful there's a God who can do this. I'm so grateful there is a God who will be with me in my deepest, darkest moments, and not just with me in my highest, most joyful experiences. He's the God of the mountaintop and he's the God of the valley. The God of the light and the God who doesn't disappoint you in the times of darkness. Even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we do not fear because he is with us. 
Okay, let's have a little look at this verse very briefly this morning. When the pastor says very briefly, you know you're here for a good 15 minutes, half an hour, aren't you? Okay, notice first the problem. Do not be anxious about anything. Anxiety. Most of the time we can cope with a little bit of anxiety. Uh, a little bit of anxiety might actually uh, excite us or stimulate us to do something about something. But when that anxiety is prolonged and we are in a situation where there is constant worry and strength, it wears us down. And uh, I, I think that's what a lot of people have been experiencing with the coronavirus restrictions. Being shut into our homes, being kept away from our family, having to wear masks when we come to church. You can't have a good old sing. You can't go up and shake people's hands or give them a hug or uh, connect with them in that way. That constant wearing down and you turn on the television and it's telling you how many people have died and uh, how much longer uh, this is likely to go on for. And it is the constant anxiety that undermines us, that pulls us down. Sometimes a traumatic event then in life, like losing a job or losing a loved one, can push us over the edge. And as a result of that, when we are anxious, we get depressed. And when we get depressed, we shut down and we look to protect ourselves by often turning in on ourselves or looking for solutions to our anxiety in all the wrong places, over, overindulging in things. Maybe food, or drink, or gambling, or whatever takes your fancy. We turn in and we overthink, often in negative terms, about ourselves or about others, and we want to stay in bed rather than get up. And we withdraw from people rather than go out and talk to people. And I guess over this last year, every one of us has felt a little bit like this in some way at some time. Yes? If you haven't, good for you. But in the majority of people's experiences, the constant anxiety has led to those down days of some level of depression. And often that the anxiety and stress then shows up in our health. And uh, the, the health can be different for all of us. For some people, our immune system is less responsive, so we catch colds more often. Uh, others will, like Ruth Rice, have laryngitis and lose her voice. Other people will have uh, skin issues and problems. Other people will have headaches. Everyone is different. Am I describing things that you can identify with this morning? Or am I only talking about myself? <laughs> if I'm only talking about myself, pray for me. <laughs> but if I'm describing what is true for, for many of us, let's pray for each other. Uh, and in these situations, we often turn in on ourselves. While Paul points us to a better solution to anxiety, instead of turning in, turning out to God and to others for help. And let me put this very simply. If there's somebody here today and you'd be embarrassed to come and talk to me as the pastor because of your worries or your problems, then you can call the Samaritans. Free phone. 116123. This is what we mean, in, in a sense, by partnership. We can partner with groups within the community around us. And sometimes you feel like, I can't talk to Martin about this. Uh, I'd be too embarrassed. Then ring the Samaritans or, or another group. Or if you wanted to contact me, my mobile number is there. You can text me and we'll arrange a get-together and a chat and a pray. 07 469 842 
0930 or contact us if you're watching uh, online on email at faith at gilgal.co.uk but rather than turn in on yourself or turn to that uh, overindulging turn to others and turn to God that's where the solution is I like this little picture that I found on Facebook it said even the strongest hands can lose their grip the greatest minds can become cloudy and the biggest of hearts can break so be kind just always be kind I want our church to be a safe place where people who've got problems can come and find love and help and healing how about you is that the kind of church you want I want this church to be a, a place where we can say like those well-being cafes it's okay not to be okay you can come here with your problems and you will find people who will love you and care for you and will stand alongside you to try to bring the help and love of God into your life a place where we will try to be kind we won't always get it right but we'll try to be kind not judging anybody not condemning anybody not looking down upon anybody because the truth is at some point in our life every one of us will need people there for us just like that so let's be honest about it we all need each other that's what church is for God didn't make us to be individual Christians hiding away in our homes watching just God on God TV or on the internet we need community and one of the things that uh, the coronavirus has, has caused so much harm to people is is that we don't have the same opportunity for community right now and so I pray God uh, take away the masks take away the social distancing help us to be able to be there for each other to put an arm around somebody to take their hands and pray for them and connect strengthen each other again we have a solution to the problem so notice secondly the prayer do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your requests to God and you start to receive the peace of God prayer is powerful medicine it's not wrong to go to the doctors and take antidepressants there's nothing wrong with that God uses medicines and God also uses miracles prayer is powerful medicine and as we give our heartache to God our, our troubled mind and confusion to God in prayer the Holy Spirit begins to work like a powerful medicine alongside maybe the medicine that you had from your doctor or your chemist notice the two ingredients in this powerful healing medicine of prayer requests and thanksgiving both release the Holy Spirit's healing power into anxious hearts and troubled minds as we pray and seek God's help the Holy Spirit begins to work as we make our requests Lord help me and sometimes that's all I can pray I, I won't reveal too much but there have been times in my life when I've laid on my bed and just prayed Lord help me and he has there have been times I've also been grateful when other people have prayed for me and sometimes when you don't have a prayer yourself find somebody else to pray for you whether you put something on our church prayer chain whether you contact me as the pastor whether you've got a Christian friend who is mature who you can contact who will come around and in your garden if they're not allowed in your house we'll just pray for you there is a, a comfort a, a release 
as strengthening when you hear somebody else pray for you. Hallelujah. There is power in prayer. And the world around us might say, oh, well, it's just psychosomatic or it's, you know, it's just uh, uh, something, you know, uh, uh, ordinary. But I tell you this, when people have prayed for me, it has blessed me. And I've moved from stressed to blessed. Here's a little one for you. Stressed backwards is desserts. And the temptation is to comfort eat. Your favourite cake or, or chocolate or something. But listen, that's just getting stressed backwards. And then you're just going to, you know, too much sugar or too much food and you start getting anxious or worried about that. Rather than get stressed, get prayed for so that you're blessed. And let God bring the Holy Spirit's healing. Sometimes dramatically, sometimes slowly and quietly into your life. And alongside that prayers of requests, don't forget thanksgiving. Just stop and thank God for the good things in your life, even the very ordinary things. You've got a bed to sleep in, got a roof over your head, got a warm blanket. When it's raining, you've got shoes on your feet. Just stop and count the blessings. Instead of counting sheep, if you can't sleep, count the blessings. Even the very simple ones. Got running water in your house? You've got somebody to talk to? You've got a great church with a wonderful pastor. You've got the Word of God. You've got the Holy Spirit. You've got Jesus, you've got the Father. Count your blessings. It's good medicine. And when we bring the problem to God and we ask and we start to give thanks, not only do we start changing inside, but our ability to cope with what's going on outside uh, changes around us. Thank God for the power of prayer. And then thirdly, notice the peace. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Listen, peace is not the absence of trouble, it's the presence of God's Holy Spirit. The Bible doesn't say that God will make all your problems go away. The Bible does say that God will be with you in the problem and give you strength to cope. Peace is about wholeness, about balance, about harmony in life. It's the Hebrew word shalom. Not an absence of troubles, but the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's not something that can be easily explained. As Paul says, it transcends understanding. But it, it is, if I can try to explain what can't be explained, okay? To, to know the peace of God doesn't mean that you stop being anxious, but that anxiety gets back into balance. Your life gets back into balance. You find mechanisms of coping. You are given strength to endure. You are given wisdom to find the way through the problem. And all of that coming from the presence of God and the assurance that the God of the Bible will not let you down. He will not let anything come your way that with him you can't cope with. It's an assurance. It's a presence. It's a peace. But Ruth Rice, she experienced that peace one morning while having a cup of, cup of tea. And as she held the cup in front of her at the start of the day, 
put our hands around it. I don't know if you, how you drink your cup of tea uh, with your little finger up or, you know, with your, your hand. She had both hands around this cup and it was warming her hands and she just realised that as she was holding this cup, God was holding her. And God would fill her cup. And she sensed the presence of God just for a moment as she was trying to pray and trying to remember some of the promises of God's word in the Bible and uh, just took a, a, a slow, deep breath, slow down, show up in the presence of God and pray. Sense his peace. Be still. Know that I am God. Be still. Slow down. And know that I am God. What God did for Ruth Rice and started her on a process of recovery that has been a blessing not only to her but to many others. God can do for anyone. God could do for you and for me. One of the charities that we support as a church is called the Message Trust. And uh, we rejoice that one of our members actually works for the Message Trust. And the Message Trust want to share the message of Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord with the world. But they want to do this both spiritually and practically. So one of the things that they're doing at the moment is community grocery shops. And uh, through donations from supermarkets and donations through individuals, they stock a shop just like a little grocery shop and they allow people to come in and for three pound fill a basket, anything they want. The three pound is just a, a token so that people don't feel, uh, you know, that they're just taking advantage, but they have uh, something that they can contribute. And Jane works in one of these community grocery shops in Sharston in Manchester. And in the latest Message Trust uh, email, uh, it, she tells this story that each week Leah comes in for her shopping and she fills her basket and pays her three pound and then she talks to Jane. And as time went on, Leah started to share that she felt lonely, spent most of her time crying. As she comforted her, Jane had the chance to pray for Leah and explained that she was loved by Jesus and therefore was never alone. And right there in that grocery charity shop, Leah gave her life to Jesus Christ. I couldn't believe the change in her the next time she came to the store, says Jane. She was full of life and so bubbly. She told me she couldn't put the Bible we'd given her down. A few days later, I got a message from Leah sharing that she'd been struggling with debt and had become too scared to open her letters or her bills. Anxiety? Yes? Stress? Worry? However, that morning she was reading the story of the widow's oil in the Bible and felt God telling her to trust him. When the post arrived, she felt brave enough to open it, found a court order and a late utility bill. Straight away she picked up the phone, talked to the companies, was able to arrange manageable payment plans. I now know God listens, watches and directs us and provides the strength and courage to tackle things that seem unresolvable, said Leah. Wow, isn't it good? What God can do? Desperate to learn more about Jesus, Leah has been logging on for the Four Points course that they're running for members and getting involved with prayer events at the local church. I can't wait to see what God's going to do through Leah, says Jane. Let me ask you a question. How are you? Really? 
How are you? Can we be honest with God? Can we be honest with each other? Can we be honest with ourselves? How are you right now? You anxious? Troubled? Overwhelmed? Broken? A little bit? A lot? How are you? God cares about your well-being. God cares for you personally more than you and I could imagine together. He loves you. Sent Jesus to save you. To give you eternal life through forgiving your sins and abundant life by putting his spirit in you now. If you're anxious, bring that problem to God in prayer. Let that powerful medicine of prayer start to bring healing to your broken heart or your troubled mind. If Jesus has helped you, let me encourage you to tell someone so that he can also help them, which is why I love it when we have testimonies in church. God's helped you, reminds people that he can help them. If you need help, talk to someone. Bring the Samaritans if you need to. Talk to someone and talk to God. It is the first step towards healing. Don't button it up and turn inside. Just open a little bit. Turn it out. Get it out. Keeping it in isn't doing any good. Get it out. Find someone that you can talk to. And talk to God.
his presence around you and within you. Let his presence, the Holy Spirit, bring healing to your hurts, to give you the strength to cope with the worries and stresses of the life that is around you. Bring your healing through the power of the Holy Spirit, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, heal broken hearts, heal troubled minds right now. Amen. Let's stand. Of the Let's stand. Living God, full of Jackie's going to come and lead us in prayer, and then we're going to introduce Owen and Caitlin. Uh, but Jackie's going to do just some prayers for us first. Thanks, Jackie. Oh, let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for your amazing power and working in our lives. Thank you for the goodness and for the blessings over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest of times strengthening us for your purpose thank you for the great love and care thank you for your mercy and grace thank you that you are always with us and will never leave us thank you for your incredible sacrifice that we might have freedom and life forgive us for when we don't thank you enough for who you are and all that you do for all that you have given. Help us to set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you. This day and every day, we give you praise and thanks for you alone are worthy. Thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness, you are still with us that your word says you were close to the broken-hearted and save those who are crushed in spirit our comfort abounds through christ that our greatest source of help and strength comes from you that though we face trouble and loss in this world we can be assured you have overcome it all we ask for great miracles for this hurting world the comfort of your spirit to bring a covering of grace and healing to all those who have been broken. Through our own struggle and pain, help us to be your vessel to offer comfort and strength to others who are hurting. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Owen, Caitlin, welcome. Come, come on down. We just want to introduce them very briefly this morning. Uh, Owen is our new youth pastor, and uh, Caitlin is his wife, uh, and they've been out with uh, the Sunday Club. Uh, Owen will be working with the older ones uh, there and through the week. Uh, I, 
come to the middle so that they can see you. Uh, you could take your mask off just for a moment. Okay, just so that you can see what they like. Yeah, give them a wave. Uh, we, we won't do anything, anything kind of too formal this morning. Uh, time has, has rushed and uh, if you want to have a chat with them later, uh, maybe outside or in the coming weeks, not everybody at first time. Okay, but I, I did want them to come in so that everyone could meet them. It's Owen and Caitlin's first Sunday with us and for us just to pray for them and pray God's blessing on them. And uh, this morning, as I was just thinking about this, the Lord laid a, a verse on my heart for you both from John 15 and verse 5, where Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If anyone remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's something I just felt the Holy Spirit wanted me to share with you, uh, to encourage you. I believe there's going to be fruitfulness in your lives. Hopefully you're in Gilgal as well as uh, other areas of your life. Uh, and we just want to bless you with our prayers as you begin your ministry here among us. Did you want to say anything? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> can you all hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. take the mic off the, the stand. Go on. Take the mic off. I don't think anybody else has touched it, so. Sorry. Yeah, yeah we're just uh, so thankful to come with and join you guys uh, here at Gilgal. Uh, we're excited about what God's going to do and to just work with young people, but also work as a church and just, um, hey, we want to see people come to know Jesus. We want to see people come to faith. And uh, that's what we're excited about. And we're excited to join you in serving together and uh, getting to know you all um, over time. And yeah, just very, very excited. So um, yeah, thank you. Let's just pray a blessing on Owen and Caitlin. Father God, we thank you for bringing Owen and Caitlin to join us in your work here at Gilgal. We pray, Father, your blessing upon them that they will be uh, aware of fruitfulness in every area of their lives as they seek to honour your Son and their Saviour, Jesus. So, Lord, bless them and make them a blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Thank you. Uh, maybe hide at the back, because I don't think there's any seats free uh, anywhere. Uh, and uh, you can have a quick hello to Owen and Caitlin, probably outside near the car park afterwards. Just don't all crowd around uh, too much, and conversations need to be kept to a minimum. Okay, uh, or maybe don't talk to them today, but talk to them another time. Okay, let's have our final song. Uh, and let's stand and worship God together. It's great. 
is with us, that war could start again. Ooh, war could start again. Ooh, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are high. These are familiar words, words praying for God's peace. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord turn his face towards us and give us his peace. Amen. Amen.